we just came out of a closed session with our um, attorney to talk about um, upcoming collective bargaining negotiations. And now we will uh, commence with our public meeting. Uh, looking at our agenda, there are no other uh, items for this evening. Um, looking forward, next Tuesday, on Tuesday, December 6th, uh, here in the council uh, chambers, we will be having a joint meeting with our uh, delegation, our state delegation, uh, and we hope that the public can join us. Uh, we will start the evening with a welcome and overview and then have time for public comments. We ask that people um, sign up in advance uh, if they would like to give public comments. Um, you can do so on the website, um, or if you have any difficulty with that, you can call the city offices um, to sign up. Um, and then we will have a presentation of Tacoma Park legislative priorities, delegation comments, and time for open conversation between our state delegation and the city council. So I hope people are able to join us. That will be Tuesday, December 7th, uh, excuse me, Tuesday, December 6th here uh, in the auditorium. And then our regular meeting on Wednesday, December 7th, the council will be meeting uh, in a closed session at 6 p.m. to uh, talk to our attorneys and receive legal advice regarding potential litigation of the Washington McLaughlin property. Uh, it's a lawsuit filed by Fairview Investment. Um, so that will be in our closed session. And then on December 7th, we have a work session regarding the Tacoma Junction redevelopment and a potential voting session um, for a possible vote related to Section 4 of the um, development agreement we have between NDC and the City of Tacoma Park. And then after that, the City Council is on recess um, for the month of uh, December, and we come back for our first meeting in January on January 11th. So that's our... Agenda moving forward. Now we'll take time for public comments. Um, first, we'll take public comments on any voting items. We have our first voting item tonight is a resolution approving the purchase of 126 and 128 Lee Avenue by Montgomery County Coalition for the Homeless and co um, Coalition Homes. Does anyone have any comments on the um, resolution approving the purchase of 126 and 128 Lee Avenue? Then moving ahead, we have a second reading ordinance authorizing the purchase of a replacement truck for public works. Any comments on that? And then our third voting item is the resolution providing for the city council's winter recess. Any comments on that? Uh, okay, Mr. Loveless, we'll get you the microphone. delegate with one question. I'm cu curious what happens if you vote for the uh, if you vote for the uh, recess when you when you people get up there to vote what happens if people vote no on the recess <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's uh, four dissenting votes and you get a no what happens I guess we have to have meetings in December <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious there's nothing, no, no, no one's ever addressed that issue before. <laughs> or if you don't get a quorum or something like that. Wonder why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one's ever uh, brought that issue up yet, and I'm curious. Anyway, I want to tell everybody out there, have a happy Thanksgiving and Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Loveless. All right, now moving on to general public comments. Any, other, uh, any public comments this evening? Mr. Loveless, go ahead. Okay, here I am again. Quick, quick draw. Just wanted to, uh, this is Pat Loveless, your official peace delegate, 7620 Maple Avenue. I want to uh, tell everybody out there that uh, I had a thankful Thanksgiving and everything that I think every day should be Thanksgiving. We should be thankful for what we've got. We've got a good city council. We've got a good city to live in. And we should be thankful uh, we got that. And by, by uh, doing that is by community participation. We should ask the people out there to participate in everything we uh, can do to make our city and our country a better place. We've had demonstrations against white supremacy down in on D.C. We've had demonstrations against the, uh, the election and whatever, how it came out. 
We've had other uh, peace-related demonstrations. And I'd like to ask everybody, if you come to these demonstrations, which you're welcome and actually encouraged to do so, do not use violence. We almost had a, an incident uh, last Saturday when I was able to uh, tell the people no violence, and they stopped. But I'd like to have everybody keep that in their foremost of their mind. If you go down to a demonstration, don't get violent. I'm asking everybody out there, and I'm asking my city to tell the schools that. And I'm proud of the children for the walkout they did. I'm very proud of them. It goes to show that the people are starting to take action now and take, take responsibility into their hands. I'm asking people, please, use common sense when you're doing this because things could get ugly. We're having the inauguration demonstration coming up. We want that to be a peace demonstration. Now remember, it's not violence. It's about peace. We want to uh, have peace in the Women's Rights March demonstration coming up the next day on the 21st. We want to ask people, to, again, keep peace in the forefront of your minds. They want you to act up the opposition. And the warmongers want us to act up. Then we can look bad, and they can look like the righteous ones. Because we've got to remember the media shows what, what we do. And we've got to, uh, we've got to be on, on our best behavior. So please leave the, leave the rocks and bottles at home. And don't do it. And don't expect me to take violence either, because I won't do it. I know what it's like to be at the receiving end of it. I'm crippled for life. I'm blind. Broke my back. Got several fingers amputated when the Ku Klux Klan got me. I got gangrene and got granulomatosis as a result of it. And no, I won't throw rocks back at the Ku Klux Klan either, because I don't want to see another human being going through what I'm going through. So please take that into account when you've got people go to demonstrations. That's what I'm telling you. Don't act like a turkey. You remember what happens to turkeys on Thanksgiving? They get the, the heads cut off, stuffed full of breadcrumbs, put in the oven, cooked, eaten, and the next day down the toilet. Thank you, Mr. Lovelace. Thank you. Any other public comments this evening? Good evening. My name is Bruce Williams, Lincoln Avenue. Uh, first, in response to Mr. Lovelace's question, I believe the charter says you have to have one meeting a month, which you would meet by meeting next week. So I think the answer is you wouldn't have to do anything else. Uh, I, 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 two. That's a relief. Um, I came down just to share a thought or two about the uh, development agreement with NDC and the proposed letter of intent with the co-op. Uh, I know you're going to be voting on that potentially next week. Uh, I do want to say that I think the co-op needs to change their approach in how they're trying to get this letter of intent with NDC. I think they have been neglectful in, in their approach and their scope of what they think is reasonable. Um, I think that you need to do everything you can to make sure they have every opportunity to approach this correctly so that they do come up with an LLI. So if you need to add the extension for 30 days, I would encourage you to do that. I think that the co-op tends to think that they can rely on things like the language that says reasonable accommodation if they don't come to the LOI. I would point out to them that reasonable accommodation could be anything. Reasonable accommodation could be a three-foot sidewalk to get from where they unload a truck to their loading dock. It could be access from Sycamore Avenue. It could be access from Columbia Avenue. Nobody wants those options. But those could be reasonable accommodations. So I think they need to realize that their best opportunity and their best chance to be the viable expanded co-op that people in this community want is to come up with an agreement with NDC. I think NDC has done an excellent job of coming up with alternatives. I've looked at the various things that they've proposed. I think those are good options. And I would just encourage the co-op to do what they need to do to come to a signed LOI with NDC. And I will be back next week for public comment when I'm assuming that a number of co-op supporters will be here so that they hear me say that. Thank you. Thank you. Any 
Any other public comments this evening? Okay. Then we'll move on to council comments. Any comments from the council? No council comments this evening? All right, Council Member Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first off, uh, I want to thank uh, Washington County League of Maryland Municipal League for uh, allowing me to speak to them about the league's uh, legislative priorities for uh, next year. It was a, a great dinner. Uh, but Washington County is very far. <laughs> <laughs> it took a long time to get there. But uh, it, it was a great bunch of people. They had their uh, uh, delegation there, and everyone said that they support our priorities. So hopefully we can get a bill passed through the General Assembly to restore highway user revenue. Uh, everyone w said that they would support it, so we shall see. Uh, the other thing I would like to say is uh, last week I had the opportunity to go to uh, the City Summit Conference uh, sponsored by the National League of Cities. I would encourage that uh, us as a council, we appropriate the funding in the budget so that other members can go to this conference that's held once a year in different parts of the country. This was the best conference I've ever attended. Uh, that has to do with municipal issues. Uh, they brought in people from all over the country that talk about everything from uh, maker spaces to autonomous cars. Um, it was really, really a good conference. And next year it's going to be in Charlotte, so I recommend that uh, my colleagues get an opportunity to go. Thank you. Councilmember Schultz. Thank you. Uh, a couple things uh, that have occurred to me as I sit here. Uh, one, I want to thank um, um, our peace delegate for your comments because uh, there's a reason that the city some years ago appointed you uh, as our peace delegate. Uh, and and uh, given the times that we're in now and the anxiety that our society is going through, at least in this community, and... Um, the number of people who are eager and anxious to participate in uh, in um, demonstrations and, and to uh, or, or and that sort of thing. Um, the, uh, the, there's no telling what what's going to happen, and so it's all the more important for for leaders like, like you to be able to sort of say what you just said. Uh, and to make yourself known and to help people who are not experienced with this sort of thing to understand what they're getting themselves into and what they're exposing them, what the risks are, um, not just for them, but for, for all of us politically. Um, and I uh, also wanted to sort of share an exper exper personal experience that I thought was interesting, taught me something. I, uh, my wife and I, Nancy, uh, we spent uh, three days a week ago in New York City. And uh, as we try to get up there uh, from time to time just to enjoy the city and see some sights and take in a museum or something like that, we had the uh, experience of, of getting on the subway and finding that it was very crowded and all of a sudden, all these people started, young, younger people started offering my wife a seat on the subway. People getting up and saying, no, no, here, you sit here, please, ma'am. And then they looked at me and they said, sir, you too, you should sit down. So I turned to a couple of these young people and said, gosh, f being old is finally paying off. <laughs> Uh, but it's, but the, the point is, is not to make a, a joke out of it so much as that what we found in, in over and over again in, in walking in New York is a, a, an awful lot of courtesy from people that we didn't know, of course. They didn't know us. All they, they were quite people were helpful with directions and things like that. And uh, I reflected on that a lot 
because I know that I don't ever see that happen in, in the Washington Metro system. Is is that uh, and 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 I've had a very long conversation with while we were riding the subway with a, a, a United States Postal Service a letter carrier who was on her way home. And we got to talking about that, uh, and she said that it's true that people in New York tend to be very careful because it's so so dense and so crowded to take care of each other and to be courteous. And I was just saying, gosh, I wish we had that kind of that level of courtesy in, in, in public uh, public places and in our our, our metro system in, in the Washington D.C. area. And just an observation that I thought I wanted to share with. Uh, uh, my 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 uh, people who know me in, in Tacoma Park is that um, enjoy New York City because even though it's crowded and it has a reputation for people being brusque and discourteous, I find that when you spend the time to say hello to people and uh, start start a conversation, it, there, there's just an awful lot of friend of friendliness there that you might not realize that there is. So that's all I wanted to say tonight. Great. Any other council comments? Council, did you press your button? I did. Okay, yeah. you're go. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Um, one yesterday, I had the opportunity to go to the blood drive that the uh, police department here um, hosted, and it was uh, sponsored by the Red Cross. I got there kind of late at the Hefner uh, Rec Center. I thought I'd be the last person there, and then. As I was getting finished up, four people from the public works came in, so I thought that was that was good. Um, most of them forgot their IDs and had to leave and come back, but that's another story. Um, just for the city manager, um, two things, if you don't mind. Um, there's a real problem with a couple of the sidewalks right at the intersection of Maple and Philadelphia. Like, you literally can't walk on them at all. I think it's been that way for a while, and obviously once the snow and ice comes, that would be a problem. So I'm never sure where Philadelphia Avenue is concerned if it's state highway mm -hmm. so we need to try to get that fixed and the other thing is and there may be nothing that can be done about this but it was brought to my attention so I figured I would just mention it with the leaf collection happening at least once the leaf connection coincided with um, at the same time and place with the sort of uh, in this case it was the small business Saturday shopping period and so a couple of the store owners found it kind of impossible to really even interact with with the um, customers. And I don't suppose it's possible because there are so many different things like the pajama thing and the art hop and all of that. But maybe just at this time of year, if, if those events can be roughly kept track of and try to avoid at the most intense time when customers might be shopping, that would be great. Thanks. Great. Mayor? Yes, go ahead. My light's not working. Oh. I just have, sorry. Go ahead. Um, just two quick things, um, and I guess this is for my colleagues. I've been hearing a lot, and I've mentioned this at previous meetings, from um, residents on Lee and Sherman Avenue in regards to the incline of the hill and vehicles moving down and greater concern now with the upcoming winter months um, and how they want the city to move back and reconsider painting yellow lines at the edge of their driveways. I don't know why we went in the direction that we did, but my understanding after speaking to city staff on this issue is that they were going to need some direction from the council, and I'm just sort of raising that as a sort of something that I would like to pursue, at least have a conversation about, because there appears to be concern in the community, and if there is real good reason for why we don't do it, I think it should be flushed out a little bit more on an agenda item. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to mention was yesterday I had an opportunity to attend an old, uh, an old Tacoma Business Association event with, um, what's your name, sir? Peter Kovar, <laughs> uh, uh, thrown together by Laura Barclay, and it was attended by a number of people in the community, including Roz Grigsby was there as well. And it was, again, again regarding that issue about personal property tax, um, Larry Silverman was there, and I've mentioned to him last night that he has been the trailblazer of this issue, but last night it became very clear that there is a wider audience of business uh, folks and entrepreneurs who have an issue with the, how the per personal property tax is assessed and how they believe it's in inequitable in, in its assessment. Um, 
So that's something also that I think I want to thank those who were involved in putting that together, particularly Laura Barclay, but I think I want to put on the radar from my colleagues something that I think there's real concern about, and as we move to forward in Tacoma Junction, we want to attract businesses in our community, particularly those that have inventory and things that you want to look at. Um, it's something worth uh, addressing. Thank you. Councilmember Mayo. Thank you. <clears throat> um, for the city manager, uh, the mural that's happening or that's being painted on Prince George's Avenue, Belford Avenue, um, is, I think, uh, really uh, pretty and, and interesting. Um, my suggestion was going to be that if it's possible to have a city film crew go out and just at a moment when the artist is painting something, uh, do a time lapse or otherwise capture a, you know, a bit of the, the installation process. I understand that there will be community activities for painting some of the um, more of the background pieces of the mural, and that that could be the an opportunity for uh, for taking pictures of it as well. I appreciate the summary that um, the housing and community development director provided back to me uh, for the community, and um, I think we still have some issues in the neighborhood, uh, but um, uh, I generally think the art is being well received, so that's a that's a positive uh, step. Um, uh, former Mayor Bruce Williams spoke about the co-op um, and the development process at the junction earlier tonight, and I just wanted to speak to the public and encourage people to pay attention to where we are right now, to pay attention to what information is available, newly available, um, over the last few weeks on the city's website regarding the project, the uh, updates from Neighborhood Development Company, uh, and sort of the status of that project, knowing that we're at a critical deadline now for... Um, you know, for where the project goes, given how many people in the public have paid attention to this uh, in the past, they should continue to do so if this is an issue that they care about. Uh, and um, I think we've done a good job of getting that information out. Uh, the city has done so. The council has done so. Uh, so um, I expect we'll still hear from people that they're surprised. Um, but I don't think there's a basis to be surprised that there's something happening associated with the junction in the near future. Um, and that is it. Thank you. Great. Mayor, do Go ahead. Yeah, Councilor Smith. Yes. Can I All just? All right. <laughs> I apologize okay. for a second I bite at the mind. apple. All right. You get Council Member Siemens. Okay. His <laughs> Go time. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. He Go gives ahead. you your time. All right. His Thank time. you. All right. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Council Member Koresh, you mentioned the personal property tax. I wasn't invited to that meeting, but uh, Montgomery County Chapter of MML has adopted uh, improving reporting enforcement. Consist consistency of the personal property tax is one of our priorities for the 2017 legislation legislative session. So that is something that we are going to get into, uh, and the session does not start until January. Yep. Great. So, Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Terrific. I just have a couple of updates. Um, I was recently asked to and nominated to serve on the COG board as the secretary treasurer, which will start in January. So that's congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. I think so. That's a good thing. Um, it, it doesn't bring us more money. No, just more work. <laughs> that's all for me. Um, more meetings, because what's life without meetings? Um, and then also remind people that on December 11th, here in the community center at 4:30 in the evening, um, we are hosting a uh, conversation um, on Cuba. The first secretary at the Cuba. Uh, the U.S. Cuban Embassy will be here, as well as our county executive and our county council member, Mark Elridge, um, will be here. So I hope people are – it's a timely subject. Um, and we are – it will be more of a conversation um, with the first secretary um, about future relations between Cuba and the United States. And that's on December 11th here at 430. Um, in I'm addition – could you yeah. clarify? The, the person coming is the – Cuban representative to the United States or the United States representative to Cuba? The Cuban rep representative to the United States. So he's the first secretary at the Cuban embassy. So he's Cuban. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, the uh, next thing is I, I want to uh, let people know that um, last weekend, the weekend before, the dialogue between the police department and young people in the community took place. I want to thank our um, community member, Lorig uh, Shirkudian, for 
um, giving her time as well as thank the members of the police department, our recreation department, and the young people who uh, took part in this. Um, we're looking forward to hearing more about what was discussed and recommendations for things we can do in the future. Um, in addition, um, the city manager and myself spent the afternoon in Prince George's <laughs> County. Uh, it took us a little longer. We, were, we went for um, a meeting with the county executive, um, Baker, uh, and we discussed with him uh, New Hampshire Avenue, uh, walked him through the importance of uh, doing something on New Hampshire Avenue, what uh, the groundwork we've already laid here in the city, um, and he was very interested in it, so I think that was a, a good visit and hopefully more to come on that. In addition, we discussed the fact that we are still waiting on a mutual aid agreement between our um, police department and Prince George's, and he said he would get on it right away um, and that we could pick up the phone anytime and call him if it was, <laughs> did not happen soon. So hopefully that will happen quickly. Um, finally, um, over the um, Thanksgiving break, uh, I received a number of um, emails and phone calls about um, what seems to be an increase in graffiti, um, particularly a certain um, type of graffiti. I just wanted to uh, let residents know that the police department is in the process of investigating it um, and that the best thing to do if you see any graffiti or something um, or destruction of personal property um, to actually report it to the police department. Um, so if you can do that. And I think that's it for me. Yeah, I just, to, yeah. just wanted to say I noticed that myself mm -hmm. when I was... Uh, Driving down, uh, was it yesterday? Uh, down on Carroll in yeah. Old Town, a number of locations. Mm -hmm. okay. City manager, thank you. Um, wanted to uh, kind of alert staff and residents that in um, tomorrow morning, part of the back parking lot will be closed. We'll have a crane um, putting new HVAC units on top of this building, hopefully Yay. to address the issues that we have with HVAC here. Um, <laughs> I've popped the doors open because it's warm in here tonight. Um, and so that's, um, it'll probably take up about 20 parking spaces. It's only for a few hours, but Thursdays are always popular days in the, in the, uh, in the community center. Um, as many of you know, there's no Tacoma Junction letter of intent um, at this point between NDC and the co-op. Yesterday was the deadline, and obviously it is the topic of conversation at, uh, at the next council meeting on December 7th. Um, as Councilmember Mail mentioned, there's a lot of information on the website um, that people can look at about that item. Um, the Noise Control Board is finally getting together. Their yeah. first organizational yeah. meeting is tomorrow night, so we're looking forward to uh, having that asset in our um, organization. Is that open to the public? Of course. Okay. It's probably, it's, it's primarily going to be on organizational matters, right. not kind of, not content, but um, we're glad that it's getting underway. Mm -hmm. There is a public meeting regarding Eastern Avenue rehabilitation uh, that is sponsored by DDOT, the, Department, the DC Department of Transportation. Um, and they don't have the dates on this. Um, there's the 13th and then there's the 6th, 7th. No. Do you remember the other one, December? Six, this, the 7th, because it conflicts with your council meeting on okay. one night and then the, that's right. Um, that's right. Yeah. 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 Talk to Miss Weed about that. Um, but in any event, our public works uh, department uh, director and construction manager will be participating in those meetings to see how it intersects mm -hmm. uh, with the city, and and we'll be working with them on that and trying to share as much information as we can. Um, this evening, I wanted to raise um, two requests for use of the auditorium. Um, sometimes these come in and request for a resolution or something, but. Um, we do need to have uh, some council direction on these, and there's uh, two requests on whether we should approve a fee waiver as opposed to having these organizations pay for the cost of the time to use the facilities and have staffing and, and video. Um, Bruce Cromer, on behalf of the Tacoma Park Jazz Fest, requests use of the space in early December to hold a promotional concert and information session about the Jazz Fest. Um, as it's uh, seen declining attendance in recent years. So this is to try to get new blood into the Jazz Fest group. And then the Sam Abbott Living Legacy Project of Historic Tacoma 
uh, request to use the space for a sanctuary city forum focused on the history of the sanctuary city legislation in Tacoma Park and more generally the current status of sanctuary cities in the U.S. and that would be later in January. Um, and um, in reviewing the, the kind of activities they are, I actually think they're both appropriate for that fee waiver, but it is a council, I think, determination. So I don't know, if, um, Mayor, if we could get a straw vote on that. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, would people be comfortable with the fee waiver for, on behalf of the Tacoma Park Jazz Fest? How much does it cost? Mom? It's $500, $600. Any reason? Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and then on the Sam Abbott Living Legacy Project related to sanctuary cities. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you. And I've just also noted um, sometimes our holiday schedule gets a little confusing, mm -hmm. but we're uh, we'll, during December will be closed for um, a long weekend over the Christmas holiday, and then just the Sunday and Monday for the New Year's holiday. Having said that, I know a number of people are taking advantage of having the council on recess mm -hmm. and also taking their uh, their vacations too. So uh, we'll continue to be in service uh, for the public, but we may be at reduced levels during that time. Okay. That's Thank awesome. you. Any questions for the city manager? When is the um, staff holiday party? Um, the ninth, Friday the ninth. Mm -hmm. It's a college party. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we certainly hope the council comes. It's a nice event, and it's an opportunity to, well, actually, it's, we're supposed to dress up, which. <laughs> but you mean anyway. black tie or something? No. No. No, <laughs> no think, think of ourselves. No. Um, but uh, it is a nice uh, an opportunity to um, enjoy each other at, for the holidays. All right, then we'll move on to our voting sessions. The first is a resolution approving the purchase of 126 and 128 Lee Avenue by Montgomery County Coalition for the Homeless. Um, Ms. Daines, do you want to? Mm -hmm. I'm going to recuse myself. Oh, okay. Good evening. As the mayor's indicated, the council is being asked this evening to adopt a resolution authorizing the city of, or excuse me, Montgomery County Department of Housing and Community Affairs to exercise its right of first refusal to acquire two properties on Lee Avenue, 126 and 128 Lee Avenue. Um, both the city and the county have this right under their um, respective codes, um, as well as any existing tenant association or tenant occupying a building has a right to acquire a rental facility when it becomes available for sale. Um, the city and the county were both notified by the um, um, real estate agent handling the transaction that a contract had been um, executed for the purchase of the property by a private entity, which then triggered the city and the county's rights to acquire the property under the, their respective codes. Um, you have in your agenda packet a resolution um, which basically lays out the process, um, identifies the code under which the city could exercise its right of first refusal, um, the county's option as well, and um, identifying how the county would um, transfer the property over to the Coalition for the Homes um, for housing uh, homeless families, uh, low and moderate income individuals, and then having a set aside for market rate um, rental units. The county is unable to proceed on its ex to exercise its right of first refusal without the city's authorization. There's also a s deadline established with that, and for them to um, exercise their rights within the parameters of their code, the council is required to act this evening. And Mr. Vincent is here from the county if you have any mm -hmm. more questions. So a lot of information was provided at the council meeting up at the Hampshire um, Rec Center. I'd also like to just uh, note that in the resolution, <coughs> there is the typo mm -hmm. it says Ward 3, but it's Ward 4. So mm -hmm. just wanted to make sure that that that's been corrected in some versions, but I wanted to make sure that it's in yours. Okay. Right. Does anyone have any? Yes, Councilmember Siemens. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, have no questions. I uh, uh, strongly support this with the uh, correction in the uh, <laughs> resolution, and I would like to move the resolution. Okay. Um, Councilmember Kovar and Councilmember Mail, do you have questions before we? Question. All right, Councilmember Mail first, and then Kovar. So my, just the, I found the, um, the resolution a little bit unclear. The county is exercising, is purchasing as part of the purchase. It's, 
It's exercising its right of first refusal. So basically what it's doing is it's um, taking advantage of the negotiations that the private entity has um, been able to, uh, they would be acquiring the building and then transferring their ownership to the um, Coalition for the Homeless. Um, but the key part is that they're acquiring the building. And then there's a they initially acquire the building okay. and then transfer ownership over to the other, the nonprofit. Okay. I just, I found the one, two, three, four, fifth, fourth warehouse confusing because it says of its interest in exercising its right of first refusal to acquire said properties because it could be exercising its right of first refusal to acquire, right, which is a, the term in the, or, or it could be exercising its first right of refusal. It is acquiring, you know, um, the property. So it wasn't clear to me that, that which which it was uh, from just the document. The right of first refusal is required, uh, gives them the authorization to acquire the property. Got it. Thank you. Councilman Kovar? Just two questions, if you, if you don't mind. So the whole process only gets triggered at a point when a private uh, company seeks to purchase it, or could it just happen before that as well? The typical trigger is when a contract has been executed by a private entity. Okay. Um, there have been occasions, though I can't recall any off the top of my head, where the um, county has gone in once a property became available for sale. But and typically so it's after a private entity has negotiated the terms of the contract. Okay. So are we um, reasonably confident that, I mean, it sounds like, and this falls on what Council Member Mail said, so the county's getting it and then there's a separate provider and then there's a separate developer. So these three different entities, are we confident they can do a good job as opposed to a private company on its own? Yes. The county has worked with the coalition <coughs> homes on a number of projects. They'll be the actual entity acquiring the prop. I'm getting this backwards probably, but there's there are two entities. One is an affiliate of the coalition for the homes or coalition homes. Um, that would provide the programming and do the tenant mm -hmm. support services. Uh, the other is a more of a development arm of the group. But those are be connected to each other. Yes, too, right? they're connected. Okay. Thanks. Councilmember Kreshi. Um, thank you, Ms. Staines. I actually forwarded an email to the deputy city manager from a constituent who has a number of questions, which I, in my reading of the questions, they don't really pertain to us as a city council or the city staff. It's sort of what happens to the property once it's owned by Coalition for the Homeless and the turnover rate and the eligibility requirements for families who meet certain criteria and the like. And I would just ask that you provide just some guidance. And it may just be we don't really know the answer to that yet. If you can, that, that would be helpful. We can, um, if you could forward the email to me, we can um, respond directly to the questions. Mr. Dan Weber already did. So thank you very much. Because I think people just want to be able to you know, know who their neighbors are that are potentially going to be moving in. And to the extent there's people in our community, although I don't think it's a large number, that have a concern about what and want to learn more about what Coalition for the Homeless does and um, want to express their views on that, like what that forum would be for them, because this is us just electing not to exercise our, you know, our opportunity to purchase. So. One of the nice things about this particular pr proposal is that the support services that are provided by the Coalition for the Homeless um, are very extensive. So they don't just put people into these units and then walk away. Um, they give them the support that they need for financial um, literacy, if you will, and to make sure that there's some stability within the home. Thank you. Councilmember Schultz. Um, I am I'm, I'm going to support this resolution uh, into which will enable Montgomery County to exercise its opportunity to acquire this property. But I think I want to take a moment to explain uh, why I, I am going to do this in case anybody in the public is interested in, in understanding. Because we do have a private entity, uh, Solo Investment Group, LLC, that has a signed contract to purchase this property for uh, a designated price. Um, and normally, uh, all things being equal, I would be very interested in seeing a small private investment group uh, have an opportunity 
to build what I guess for lack of a better term we, we could call affordable housing or or in this case to uh, re rehab building a pair of buildings that have been vacant basically abandoned for a really long time uh, but in in I, I don't know this company, but my conversations, and I want to thank you, Sarah Danes, for all the information that you helped me to understand and supply with this, uh, based on the letter that they wrote to the city. I, I cannot get comfortable with the idea of this particular organization being taking responsibility for doing this work. Uh, would that they had more of a track record and had more or less realistic uh, data to supply us with so that we could seriously consider the possibilities of that. But when they talk about their being able to to do the renovation for almost ha about half the price of Montgomery County, um, and when they talk about being able to complete the renovation with closing in December to have the property ready for occupancy within two months, uh, that beggars the uh, imagination uh, because we know that just getting building permits in this city can take, in this county can take at a minimum of six months, much less than even getting down to the work. And sometimes it can take as long as a year. So it just suggests to me that this is a company that isn't really prepared to do the kind of work that the Coalition for the Homeless is, and that's why I think it's really important to go with that, allow that organization to proceed. Um, and finally, because they will be offering tenant support services, which the private entity would not be offering, and that's really critical in, to, in this kind of a project. So that's, that's my reasoning over why I'm going to support this resolution. Thank you. Council Member Siemens. Thank you. And um, as I uh, do move this resolution, I would like to address the concern of Councilmember Mayle uh, and suggest that in whereas number four, uh, we add two words so that it would now read exercise in its right of first refusal in order to acquire the properties. All right, before I ask for a second, I'd just like to add my two cents. I want to thank the uh, <clears throat> representative from Montgomery County uh, coming this evening as well as at our council meeting on November 14th. Um, in addition, we had a representative from the Coalition for the Homeless and Coalition Homes who came to the meeting on November 14th. And if there's any uh, members of the public who are watching at home who would feel they need more background information on this, I, I would urge them to look at the video from that um, council meeting because I think it was a, a very um, interesting and an informative evening to hear about the services that will be provided. Um, I'm going to um, support this and vote for um, the uh, resolution because, uh, in my mind, the, the mission and the work that's going to be done here fits with our council priorities as we've discussed them regarding affordable housing and, in particular, um, looking at those who are chronically um, homeless and addressing their needs. And so um, I'm glad that the county is looking at these two apartments um, and looking forward to them being um, redone and rented out <laughs> and people living them and um, bringing new people to our community. Um, so with that, I have one, uh, I have the motion from Councilmember Siemens um, with a small amendment. Is, do I have a second? Second is amended. Councilmember Mail, second with amendment. Any other discussion or questions? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No? All right. And there was one abstention. And one abstention, yeah. All right, so we're done with that item. Thank you very much. All right, our next voting item. Uh, do we want to get some other stuff? Thank you. Our next voting item is a second reading ordinance authorizing the purchase of a replacement truck for public works. I do not believe there's been any changes since the first reading. No, we just forgot to bring it back for the second reading. Okay. Um, for some reason, it slipped through the cracks, and um, happily, the city clerk found it. And oh, good. like you to to support the truck. Okay. Terrific. Did anybody have any questions on this before I ask for a motion to move it? No? Okay, may I have a motion to move? I'll move Councilmember Schultz, do I have a second? Second. Um, I'll give it to Councilmember Qureshi a second. Any other questions or discussion? Yeah. Uh, second reading ordinance, do we do roll call? Yeah. Uh, um, Councilmember Tobol? 
Aye. Councilmember Mayo. Aye. Councilmember Qureshi. Aye. Councilmember Siemens. Aye. Councilmember Smith. Yes. Councilmember Schultz. Aye. Mayor Stewart. Aye. All right. Our final item tonight, voting item, is a resolution providing for the council's winter holiday recess. <laughs> um, any questions on that? Yeah. I do. I just want to state for the record, I really hope this resolution passes. <laughs> <laughs> but out of symbolic gesture to my, my man, Pat Loveless, I'm going to vote against it. <laughs> <laughs> I want it to pass. But so I'm you'll be vote here each it. Wednesday, including <laughs> right. I'm be happy between to. Christmas and New Year. <laughs> I'm not trying to show up my colleagues, but I'm just trying to show Pat Loveless that it can be done. Right. Keep in mind that if something doesn't pass and you're part of the motion that doesn't pass it, then you can call a revote in some form. And oh, okay. That's great. <laughs> Good. All, right. Good. Good. All right. Who would like to move this resolution? Oh, after that. <laughs> <laughs> So moved. Hey, okay, Councilmember Mail, second. Second. And Councilmember Smith. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? One aye. opposed. Hey. Two. Two. <laughs> Two nays. Ooh. All right. Better show me up. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, we're getting close. All right. Now we will move to our first um, work session. It is a status report on the council priorities, and I believe I'm turning it over to the city, uh, the deputy city manager. Um, I think this evening we. Um, in discussing this item, um, because there's a lot to go through, we thought we would um, allow this deputy city manager to get through his presentation and then go back through each of the seconds uh, sections and have council discussion. So, Ms. Yes. Damover? There is indeed a lot to get through, mm -hmm. and I'll try to be um, thorough, uh, but also concise. Um, and as the mayor, <clears throat> excuse me, as the mayor stated, um, uh, what I'll do is um, uh, provide a status, a presentation on the status of uh, progress being made towards uh, achievement of the council priorities. Um, I'll start off with a brief overview of um, how the council priorities came to be, um, and then we'll go into each one of the council priority areas and talk about um, some of the goals and strategies um, and, uh, as I said, progress being made. Um, and then at the end, um, we can... Um, loop back to each of the priority areas for questions, comments, and discussion from council. Um, and I would note that uh, the information in the packet is, um, is thorough. There's, um, I believe, 12 pages of um, attachments that um, have bullet pointed lists um, uh, specifically delineating uh, where we've made progress, uh, including some of the, the specifics on various programs. I'll speak to some of those, but um, my presentation will be a, a slightly higher level than that, uh, than the um, pa information in the packet. So I encourage um, those at home to, to um, access the packet um, via the website if they're able to. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the council priorities are uh, established prior to the development of the budget. Uh, council meets in an annual retreat every year, uh, typically in January. Uh, earlier this year, the council met twice, once on January 19th and once on January 26th. Um, and um, there are many purposes um, and, and a lot discussed um, at the retreat, uh, many purposes of having the retreat, and a lot is discussed there. Um, at, and this year, um, one of the things that the council did was decided to establish priorities that, as a council, um, you all wanted to work on over the course of, of your term um, on council. Um, so. A lot of, um, speaking figuratively, spaghetti was thrown at the wall, um, discussion about um, a variety of ongoing projects, on, uh, ongoing initiatives that the city was doing that you all had um, interest in, um, and there was a lot of discussion about things that you hoped to, um, to, to get started um, during your term. And um, by the end of the 26th, uh, the council had um, gone through an exercise of um, trying to identify and honing the, the list, which was a very extensive list, um, where they wanted to focus the, uh, their, their eff your efforts um, over the, the, um, the two-year term. Uh, from the retreat, staff um, and, and who was, uh, who was uh, helping facilitate discussion and taking copious notes at the retreat, um, went away and, um, and based on what uh, direction was given at the retreat, developed a set of um, goals and strategies and desired outcomes. Um, and I just said staff did that, but I shouldn't um, give council the credit. Staff 
um, honed them and tried to uh, put them in a format that uh, was easy to understand, make sure that the, the various goals and strategies were clearly aligned with the priorities. Um, and uh, we shared that document back and forth with council um, until um, there was agreement that the uh, goals and strategies um, and desired outcomes identified reflected your conversation at the council retreat. That went before the public for comment on February 17th and the council um, affirmed the priorities on uh, February 24th. Um, and the, the word um, affirmation is used deliberately instead of adoption, um, although you did adopt the resolution, uh, because there was um, uh, interest in uh, making sure that there would be opportunities to um, evaluate the, the priorities throughout your term um, and tweak them as necessary. So instead of adopting them, which uh, more connotates setting something in stone, it was uh, the word affirm was used. Uh, so the council um, uh, uh, ultimately agreed on uh, five um, priority areas, and uh, the priorities were used to inform the development of the annual budget and establish, as I said before, the strategic direction um, of the council during its term. And the areas that uh, you all settled on um, are right here. Um, and I wanted to highlight that while they reflect broad priority areas that, that uh, you wish to focus on, they are um, by no means inclusive of every single thing that the city does. There are a number of other things that you as a body and, um, and city staff do that are very important. Um, and and uh, just because these are the identified priority areas doesn't diminish the importance of the, the other projects and initiatives um, and interests that you all have. Um, as I said, I'll go through each of, each of the priority areas um, and speak specifically to um, what we're doing um, in, in each of these areas and what you all have done through your policy making and discussions. So the first one is a livable community for all, and you established um, three goals, uh, identifying youth and family programming needs with an, a desired outcome of enhancing um, programming in those areas, um, formalizing relationships with neighboring jurisdictions, and in particular, um, establishing uh, memorandums of, memoranda of understanding with uh, D.C. and Prince George's County's public safety units, um, and ensuring that there were stable housing options and, um, and the desired outcome there was a new housing policy and plan for affordable housing. So starting with the first one, um, during the, the fiscal uh, year 17 budget development process, you all allocated funds for both a uh, possible new position geared toward youth and family services um, and for um, enhancing the city's youth programming and coordination of services for youth. Subsequently, uh, you held a community conversation focused on youth success, um, and there were several conversations um, uh, publicly and privately that occurred um, on the topic leading up to and following that event. Um, to help determine, and the purpose of, of those conversations was to help determine where the gaps in services are and how programs could be augmented or new programs created to address those gaps. In light of the lessons learned, um, we will be creating a new position um, with a focus on developing and maintaining community partnerships with organizations whose missions align with this council priority. Um, uh, we want to um, really um, um, utilize the uh, partnerships that we have with organizations in the community who have missions focused on youth success, on um, families, on uh, immigrants, on seniors, on uh, people with disabilities, um, all things that you discussed when you were establishing that goal. Um, in addition to the many programs and services already offered, particularly through the library, the recreation department, the police department, um, we have funded, implemented, um, or are going to be implementing a variety of new programs directed towards youth uh, of all ages. Um, uh, and families, uh, including early literacy and reading, uh, readiness programs in the library, and some of those programs will be offered in um, Amharic, French, and Spanish. Um, Recreation is offered or will be offering um, a series of life skills programs and workshops on things like resume writing, college and workforce prep, uh, civic education workshop geared toward young women, um, and career partnership programs. Um, the information in your packet provides a lot more detail um, and some more specificity on uh, these programs and um, what they entail. 
Um, regarding the formalization of relationships with neighboring jurisdictions, public safety uh, mutual aid agreements have been drafted and sent to reps in uh, D.C. and Prince George's County. Uh, the draft is currently under review by um, the MPD police chief and D.C. general counsel, and we're awaiting um, a response from them. Uh, it sounds like the city manager and the mayor may know more than I do uh, based on their meetings today about... We, we hope we kick-started a little bit on the Prince George's County side. That's wonderful. Um, we, we had uh, provided them with a draft, and I believe that the transition and leadership in the mm -hmm. Prince George's County Police Department, which occurred earliest, earlier this year, may have um, led to uh, some delay in, in making progress there, but I'm glad to hear that it's been jump-started. Mm -hmm. Um, regarding uh, the, the third goal um, in this priority area, um, uh, we've done an awful lot um, uh, to address this goal, and, and we're on track. The city, um, a, again, hosted a, a community conversation on affordable housing. Uh, you as a body, um, since you adopted these priorities, Estab uh, adopted an ordinance establishing a new vacant and vacant distressed uh, property registry. You authorized the continuation of the city's owner-occupied group house registration program, established a new housing fund with $400,000 budgeted in the current fiscal year, um, and uh, you also allocated $40,000 to undertake a community-wide strategic plan to facilitate the review of existing housing policies. Um, you endorsed a proposal for the development of a new down payment assistance program, um, and you were presented with and discussed a set of uh, rent uh, stabilization policy um, amendments proposed by the Renters Protection Group. And I believe those discuss uh, some of those discussions happened uh, as recently as the 16th, about two weeks ago. Um, and th those are just a few of the things that you've done. Uh, regarding uh, the second priority that uh, you affirmed, um, fiscally sustainable government, um, one of your goals was to increase funding for Montgomery County. Um, the desired outcome there is a pretty obvious one. Hopefully we get some more money. Uh, and the second goal is to adopt a, reserves, uh, a financial policy related to um, reserves. Uh, Regarding increasing funding from Montgomery County and, and what we're doing there, um, as you know, pub, uh, public policy partners, our lobbying firm, contracted lobber, lobbying firm, is currently working on developing uh, strategic plans for the council's um, top three to five legislative priorities. Each plan will include a statement of the issue, a strategy, um, uh, and identification of action steps identification of partners, including legislators or other elected officials, municipalities, and advocacy groups, um, and so on, will all be included in uh, these strategic plans. And, um, and hopefully, um, we will be able to work with others um, in, um, in trying to address our funding needs and tax duplication issues um, from Montgomery, with Montgomery County. Uh, along those lines, staff is also preparing uh, an RFP for a lobbyist to assist the city in its efforts to advocate for and promote our interests um, with Montgomery County. Uh, you all, um, after adopting, after affirming the, the council priorities, um, added some funds to the budget for that purpose. Um, we're very fortunate that Councilmember Smith was appointed vice chair of the MML Legislative Committee, which facilitates sharing of information on legislative matters affecting municipalities and building relationships, and we hope to... Um, we hope to um, capitalize on his involvement uh, and, and, and uh, standing in that role. Um, we're partnering with other municipalities in the county in an effort to influence county and state decision making with the goal of increasing funding or improving um, the provision of services uh, to, to city residents. Um, in addition to our efforts as active members of the Montgomery County chapter of MML and establishing and advocating for action on jointly developed priorities, um, we've been working directly with others to apply pressure on issues such as stormwater fees, um, the Montgomery County Public Schools system, um, capital budget and CIP, and policing duplication payments. Um, and it was very clear at the joint hearing um, that I went to on the 16th uh, on behalf of the, the city um, that uh, Gaithersburg and Rockville and Tacoma Park are very much aligned in those areas. Um, we all spoke to several of the same things at the hearing. Oops. Um, regarding the adoption of uh, financial policy for reserves, uh, staff has reviewed existing financial policies, best practices, and benchmarks related to uh, reserve levels sued to cities that are similarly situated to Tacoma Park. 
Um, we expect to have a draft policy before council uh, later this winter, hopefully ahead of uh, budget deliberation discussions for the next fiscal year. Um, the third uh, council priority is environmentally sustainable community. Um, and this is another area where we have done an awful lot. Um, city staff has been involved in a number of discussions, including with the green team and members of the Committee on the Environment, um, as, has, uh, as have council members, about what it means to be carbon neutral. Um, in general, carbon neutrality refers to achieving net zero carbon emissions by balancing a measured amount of carbon released with an equivalent amount uh, sequestered or offset, um, or buying enough carbon credits to make up the difference. Um, generally, uh, staff will need further direction from council about, um, about your interests, um, particularly the extent to which we should offset carbon emissions versus buying carbon credits uh, before we can accurately determine what the cost in order to become a carbon neutral city would be or what the, um, in addition to costs, um, what other implications there could be for that. Um, that said, we're doing uh, a ton of work in terms of greening our fleet, uh, greening our streets. Um, through stormwater projects, through the conversion um, of streetlights to LED. Um, hopefully um, that will continue, um, and hopefully we'll eventually have um, all converted lights. Um, continuing to green city facilities, and we are doing um, a ton of work encouraging residents and businesses to do the same through outreach and education, um, particularly through the efforts of uh, the Sustainability Office and Public Works. Um, and with our, um, uh, our, the work that we're doing towards the achievement of the Georgetown Energy Prize. Be nice to get $5 million. Um, fourth, engage responsive and uh, service-oriented government. Um, uh, the two goals that you establish here are identifying policing priorities and improving communications with residents. Um, regarding that first goal, after establishing this priority um, and the associated strategies, uh, the council decided to put off funding for a comprehensive community survey this year. Um, one of the strategies we want to, wanted to employ was to um, uh, survey residents and, um, and the desired outcome would be improved responses from residents um, as they related to uh, their perceptions of policing in the community. Um, we do plan to use some of the funds set aside for community policing consultation to administer a scaled back um, and more targeted survey that focuses specifically on um, the police department and the city's policing efforts um, and our uh, police department's relationship with residents. Um, we hope that our efforts to enhance police and community relations will be evident when the survey is conducted. Um, and as you know, there is a lot that we are doing. Um, the, uh, the city was a partner in the Unity Community event. Uh, we recently had a very interesting um, police teen dialogue sessions. Um, the mayor uh, alluded to those uh, a little bit earlier, I believe, during your comments. Um, the police department continues to regularly meet with neighborhoods um, to, to discuss crime um, and, and, uh, and trends in certain areas of the city. We continue to have neighborhood cookouts. Um, there was a lot of police participation in the um, community conversation on youth success. And the police also, um, police department staff also attend and participated at uh, Lunch and Learn and the Essex House um, youth programs. We're always continuing to think about um, how we can improve relationships and perceptions with the community um, and continue to think of um, proactive efforts by individual officers to engage residents in positive ways um, as part of the annual, as uh, part of their annual uh, performance evaluation process. We're trying to figure out a way to, um, to both incentivize and measure uh, how well our police department staff is doing that. Um, if you haven't already seen it, um, I'll, I'll send you a link to it. There's uh, uh, an excellent video of a mannequin <laughs> challenge done um, as part of the uh, police and teen dialogue sessions. It's, it's, uh, it's really great and impressive. Um, nobody moved for like 45 seconds. Not even the police officer holding a donut, right? Up to his <laughs> um, regarding the second goal, um, since the adoption of this priority, we have made strides in utilizing the new website, uh, which was launched uh, uh, a year ago this month, um, as a source of up-to-date information on various city projects and initiatives, uh, especially through the use of the project directory. Um, 
after the initial launch um, and uh, in, in light of the, some of the uh, conversation that you had while establishing the priorities, we added a variety of features to the website, um, including built-in translation services, improved MailChimp configuration and integration, um, alert upgrades and blog enhancements. Um, and we have uh, uh, been able to utilize um, uh, Google Analytics uh, to show that staff and council blogs and other news alerts have, in fact, been very effective means of disseminating information, uh, especially when posted to the website and then pushed through our uh, social media channels. Um, it's always helpful um, when council members use their individual um, uh, um, accounts um, in Twitter and Facebook and Instagram or wherever to help push the city's messages. Um, and it's evident that that is happening and it's, and it's working. Uh, the My TKPK application has also been an effective tool for residents to report a variety of issues to staff, um, and it's also been a really helpful tool for staff to have a system of keeping track of cer certain types of requests and their statuses. Um, the issues most commonly reported are for uh, street or pothole repair, ab abandoned vehicles, trash recycling pickup, um, and sidewalk repair. Um, we uh, Since uh, we started um, really advertising it as a means of reporting things to the city in earnest, which was about a year ago. We've had several hundred um, things reported through the app. Uh, we continue to promote it as a means of uh, reporting uh, a wide variety of issues and hope you're helping us uh, point residents in that direction uh, as often as you can. And finally, um, advanced economic development efforts. Um, the goal that you established there was to attract new business and prepare for economic development, and um, we are, uh, believe we are certainly on track there. Um, some of the things that we've done, uh, uh, council and staff, um, is uh, executed a development agreement for the redevelopment of the Tacoma Junction lot. Um, that one, as I understand, depending on who I ask, has been in the works for between 30 and 100 years. Um, <laughs> so, so that's a, a big deal. Um, council allocated $50,000 to undertake a community-wide strategic plan to facilitate the review of existing economic development policies um, approved by council with additional funding for undefined um, economic development programming, which we're getting um, uh, closer to defining. Um, you've executed contracts for economic development services with the um, Tacoma Langley CDA and the old Tacoma Business Association. Um, those contracts include um, within their scopes um, uh, that the associations will work to provide business retention, expansion, and recruitment assistance. Uh, so that speaks directly to this council priority. Um, an RFP was issued, uh, as I mentioned er earlier, associated with another council priority for services for the development of a housing and economic development strategic plan. Um, we expect that those submissions will be in, I believe, later this month. Um, we've uh, entertained a preliminary proposal to secure ownership of the, to, uh, the Tacoma Park Rec Center on New Hampshire, um, which is another item that you all discussed at your November 16th meeting. Um, a new business retention and expansion program modified to address the interests, uh, interests of Tacoma Park um, will be proposed um, for implementation uh, early next year. Um, and importantly, Council also adopted a new streetscape manual um, developed in part for the purposes of facilitating the maintenance and development of public spaces which en um, enhance uh, business vitality and support economic sustainability. Um, and you advocated for evaluation of the collection and distribution of business personal property tax by the state of Maryland. Um, as was discussed earlier and mentioned also by Councilmember Smith, um, following an extensive um, but preliminary internal review by staff where we found um, that there um, was not a lot of um, administrative oversight in how um, those funds were being collected. Um, and um, uh, that is uh, obviously important for uh, business retention in the city. Uh, we will continue to work on projects and initiatives to advance uh, the council priorities um, and we'll be um, um, discussing those at your upcoming retreat early in uh, 2017. Um, 
we will hope to receive continued council direction on preferences for meeting desired outcomes in the area where we still need some more uh, council discussion and direction. Um, and with that, I'll open it up. Uh, well, first I'll ask the city manager if there's anything uh, you'd like to add before uh, I open it up to questions, comments, or well, feedback. Yeah, one of the things that uh, actually um, Councilmember Schultz and I were talking about this yesterday. Um, you mentioned that there were things on here you didn't know about. Yes. And I said, there's thing on here I didn't know about. <laughs> um, and one of the things that I'm particularly pleased is that the department heads and staff know what the council priorities are mm -hmm. and um, have taken it to heart and have tried some different kinds of things and, and brought those up. And we have much more to do. But it's, it is exciting that people are trying these, these, different, um, these different options. Um, as you go forward um, through the um, upcoming kind of retreat and budget process, we'll also be looking to your guidance about kind of the next phase of some of these things. And of course, there are the many things that um, will be coming up that aren't specifically called for in this area, um, but are within the budget and, and overall plans, such as library expansion and that kind of thing. So there's many things that aren't really reflected in this that also are important to the to the council and to the to the city um, that we'll have to discuss um, for the upcoming year and and ongoing that's it and and um, I would also note that um, I had to do a lot of work to actually cull this attachment. Yeah, it, um, I, I, we <laughs> when, cut it. <laughs> when, uh, when, when, when we requested the information um, from staff about, you know, the things that they were doing um, in order to advance council priorities, um, another thing, in addition to learning about all the new things um, or, or in, in, in some um, instances learning about new things, that um, staff was doing in directly in response to the priorities that you established, it was very refreshing to see that we were already doing a ton of things, um, particularly in the library um, and in recreation, um, well, and pretty much everywhere um, that are very much aligned with uh, the council priorities. So um, with that said, I'll, I've, I've uh, brought the slide back to the first priority, a livable community for all. Um, and uh, maybe we can uh, focus on this one with questions, comments, discussion, and then we'll move on to the next one and so forth. Councilmember Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dan Weber, for going through this uh, list of things that the council has uh, deemed as a priority. Really appreciate it. Uh, I want to focus on the stable housing options. Uh, I didn't attend the meeting at the New Hampshire Avenue Rec Center, um, so I don't know, and I didn't watch the video, so I don't know if uh, this was discussed, but at a prior meeting uh, that was also at New Hampshire Avenue mm -hmm. Rec Center when we talked about uh, our options for housing, I had discussed us considering um, a small loan uh, fund for the smaller uh, garden style apartment owners so that um, you know we could get some of these issues like uh, plumbing, heating, uh, sometimes even floors that are warped, get some of these issues, these maintenance issues fixed uh, rather than trying to go through the same process that we currently have. Do you know if, if that was even uh, evaluated by staff or um, I would have to ask uh, the city manager or maybe Sarah Danes to respond to that question okay. um, I was also not at the November 16th <laughs> meeting um, I do believe that it's something that um, has has been discussed um, I'm, I'm not sure to uh, what extent um, i I think that there will probably be something um, that we'll learn from uh, the information that we get in response to the RFP, uh, okay. possibly, uh, about how we can um, uh, best address the needs that you uh, you just mentioned. So okay. I'm not sure if you have anything I else think to that's, I think that's okay. the answer to that. All right. Thank you. Councilmember Mayo. The city does um, projections. The city manager does projections, or the finance director does projections of the expected spending from different parts of our budget. Mm -hmm. What is your expectation right now of how much of the housing fund we will have allocated by the end of the fiscal year? Or could you provide an update on that? 
I have yeah, I'll have to come back on that. Okay. I'm, I, I mean, part, I'm, partly I'm it's to, <laughs> partly I'm to see us get the money allocated for things, but I understand it's complicated and right. I mean, partly I mean, there's there's two there's some things that um, are more spendable faster, and another part is. Um, is to build up a housing fund that can be used for some larger things. So part of that, um, we're trying to get some direction on it. And I think um, I'll come back to you on that. Thank you. Councilmember Kovar. Yeah, I, I wasn't planning to mention the um, housing fund specifically, but um, in the um, meeting that Councilmember Smith mentioned at the rec center, one of the points that I raised is I do understand the desire to let the fund build up. But I also think it would be a mistake for us to only potentially do within this fiscal year, for example, the um, proposal for the down payment assistance. And mm -hmm. understanding that until we get some of the recommendations back from the RFP, it may not be possible to uh, have a complete sense for the different directions that we might go in. I do think we ought to try to take some smaller pilot program type steps, maybe along the lines that Councilmember Smith uh, mentioned, the accessory apartment thing that I've talked about before and a few others. I really don't want to see us come to the end of the fiscal year and only have spent um, on, uh, of the 400000 only that small amount <coughs> that will be helpful on the um, down payment assistance. And just a couple other things I wanted to mention in livable community for all. Um, and I made some notes in the longer document, which is separate from the one that Mr. Dam ever mentioned, but I just want to mention, I'm not expecting these things to be resolved right now, but I do think we have to try to do more for the developmentally disabled, which is one of the uh, priorities that we've, that we've mentioned. Um, so I'd like, to, I'd like to see us do that. I noticed, for example, and we, I can send emails on this, but just as an example, in the politics and advocacy program, there's a lot of interesting people that the, uh, I think as girls would meet with but it doesn't look like it includes any elected officials. So you know, it doesn't have to be us, but it would be good to have something like that. And, and each of those programs, I think there are ideas that, that we could do, uh, you know, having council internships, helping having this, the students work with local nonprofits that, that could help. And so I think these are great starts, and the memo is incredible, and the amount of work that's being done is really impressive. And I'm going to make sure I circulate it a second time to the ward, that I, the ward that I represent, but I do think it will be important to um, push for that. And just on um, formalizing relationships with neighboring jurisdictions, which I think is part of that first one, and I'm just a little confused about the mutual aid agreement for the police with D.C., because in one document it says we're waiting a response, and then in the document that you present it says it's on track. It Those sounds like the MOUs, though. Those are different. Well, I don't know. That's what I'm but trying to do. No, no, I, I misspoke when I referred to them as MOUs earlier. They're, they're the mutual aid agreements. Okay, so it sounds as if, based on the mayor's meeting and with the um, city manager, that maybe the Prince George's one is moving, but the, the district we, one... Well, we hope. We, the, well, the oh, there's a chance the, for it. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, on this one, the district um, has been spending more time actually evaluating the document and... Mm -hmm. and moving it forward. So I think that that's where there's been greater movement. That has not happened yet in Prince George's County. Oh, so with the district, we don't think it's just sitting somewhere. In other words, I think it's not correct. just sitting somewhere. Okay. All right. That's, that's, that's helpful to, um, uh, to do that. Um, I'm not sure exactly where this would go. Um, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, and you talk about the um, Housing and Community Development Department being reorganized to focus more on the community services, we do need to have something better for commercial uh, entities garbage disposal. Uh, as I mentioned, that's a particular problem in the case that I, that I talked about two weeks ago, but I think we need to come up with something to ensure that that's included uh, in whatever we're going to do going forward on, on enforcement. So I'll just mention that. Thanks. Councilmember Siemens. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to take a minute and thank Mr. Dan Weber and also the city manager for uh, the work that you've put into this. I uh, thank you so much for your guidance as uh, we put this plan together. And I really see a, a benefit uh, in the uh, growth of the strategic plan that I've seen through the years. And I just want to take this time to thank you for your help. 
Councilmember Schultz. Uh, you know, several things. Um, when I met with the city manager yesterday, which was an unplanned meeting, and we both decided we were imposing on each other, uh, <laughs> taking each other's time, I, I had been uh, reading this, this, this document that we're dealing with right now. And one of the things that I said then, and I'll say, uh, said yesterday, I'll say again, is that in reading this, just this one page here on uh, the uh, support of youth, I was absolutely astonished by the number of things that have already mm -hmm. been initiated, not to mention something called future planned programs in support of this council priority, which lists about eight or nine more. Um, and I had to cut that back by, by three or four pages. <laughs> oh, easy for you to say. Literally. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. A um, couple thoughts in that regard is one is that you know, as a city council member, I, I'll speak for myself, you'd like to be able to think or say to your constituents, I know what's going on. But what, what I find is it, it's very humbling to realize how little how much is going on that the city is just doing, our professional staff and our service staff are doing on a daily basis that just never rises to the level of, of, uh, of public recognition, you know, running a city. But, but this, this, this section right here is, is uh, an excellent real, uh, realization of, of some of the things that we had been hoping to be able to achieve uh, years ago when I got on the city council, uh, and now we are. And and I would the other thing is just I want to figure out a way to uh, eloquently get this information out to my constituents at least, uh, so that they know this uh, rather than you know, and, and doing it in a way that is readable and they people can be aware of it. Uh, and this is a start, and I'm, uh, and uh, because it, it's, there's a lot of people I think who, were they aware of these programs would say, how can I help? You know, or, or there's somebody who'll say, oh, I've got a teenage daughter that could really benefit from this particular mm -hmm. thing, and, and I'm so glad to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, Council Member Schultz, I, uh, would like to use the opportunity to note that the winter guide is actually going to be distributed in the next newsletter, uh, yeah. and a lot of these programs are in there too. Okay. So, okay, good. And it's available on the website now. Oh, thank you. Let me. The next thing I just wanted to say that uh, in response to Mr. Kovar's comments, uh, uh, wanting to see if we can't find a way to spend some more money of the housing reserve. Uh, my own experience, and I reflect back on a few, uh, about t my first year on the council when the idea was initiated to get into sustainability, environmental sustainability, and the council allocated uh, several hundred thousand, I think two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to do that, and how hard it was uh, for us as a council who were all a hundred percent behind it to figure out the way to spend the money. And sometimes it's harder, it's easier to sort of say, this is what we want to do. But when you get down to actually defining the ways that we want to actually spend the money, it's not easy. It gets really sticky. It's hard to do it because you want to do it right. Uh, so I share your, Peter, your, your frustrations on this, but I also realize that the, these things, it's going to take some time for us to get up uh, operating on all eight cylinders and, and figuring out how we're going to literally use our housing reserve fund uh, so that it optimally um, produces some, some of the results that we want to get. Um, one of the things I'd like to see us, we're getting back to the youth thing, is something that I talked about um, a while ago when we approved reducing the voting age from 18 to 16, and that is is to figure out a way to get young people more involved literally in our city, in the day-to-day -day operations of our city government. And, and I don't mean that they come to work and do that, but I, but I would like young people to get exposure 
to the idea of public service uh, as, as where people can get jobs so that they're not necessarily thinking uh, in, in, more, in more narrow categories. And that could be done, I think, in a number of ways. Uh, you know, have, have young people shadow, come in and shadow things. Um, again, this would be difficult to, to structure. But I, I think when people understand, uh, teenagers, let's call them, understand what it is a municipal government does and how it does it and who are the people that do these things, stuff that all of this, most of us adults just take for, for, for granted. But it, you know, it's not magic uh, that, that things happen the way they do. And uh, I, I've thought of the idea of having a, a youth committee uh, made up of, uh, of kids from age 12 to you know, 16, let's say, or maybe even younger, that could hold, conduct mock city council <coughs> meetings or, uh, or actually speak to the city council as a committee about some of the things that are on their collective minds. Just all of little subtle ways of getting young people connected so that being able to vote at age 16 isn't the only thing that's out there for them. I think it's great we did that, but I just don't think, I just think doing that one thing is not sufficient. And that's what I'll say at this point. I'll leave the rest of my questions for another day. Thank you. And, uh Councilmember Schultz, I'd just like to take this opportunity because um, I wanted to update, um, particularly and let the city staff know that Mr. Gehring, who we know we already partner with, with the distance uh, di difference makers, um, I spoke to the difference makers two or three weeks ago, um, and um, there is a number of the middle school students at Tacoma Park Middle School that are interested in exactly what Councilmember Schultz um, had said. They're putting together some ideas, and I think they're going to follow up with us again, but we could good. also... Um, because we have the relationship already with Mr. Gehring, um, reach out to him. Um, but they were really interested, so I think you will, you'll get that wish granted. Oh, yeah, no, I, I would be really, really turned on by the opportunity <laughs> to be a part of that, to be a part of that, not to necessarily interfere and impose yeah. my ideas, but just, I don't know, to, to have, to be able to play some role in mm -hmm. that. Okay, and just to, on, and another thing that we're doing, we, just trying to finalize now, we're working with Piney Branch Elementary School and the fourth graders there on a project. Um, each year the fourth graders need to do um, a project that is on um, creating a business. Um, and so they actually have to do a little market study um, and think of, and they use Tacoma Park as the model. They think about, you know, who lives in Tacoma Park, what they need, um, and propose a business um, and give their reasons for it. And so when I was meeting with the principal of uh, Piney Branch Elementary School, we thought since we have the Tacoma Junction project moving forward, this would be a great opportunity for the students actually to have a real life project. So city staff has agreed, um, as well as um, Adrian Washington from um, our uh, development company we're partnering with there. So we're gonna meet with the students, talk to them about development and the process, and then they're gonna come up with ideas on what kind of businesses they would like to see at the junction. Well, uh, you so. can sign me up for that, that too. too. Okay. I, would, I would love to be able to, to participate as, as a... Uh, so yeah, so the plans are still, it's all sort of yeah. coming together, but um, mm -hmm. I think that'll be exciting. Um, Council Member Kershey? Thank you. Um, thank you to Mr. Dan Weber and the city staff for putting this together. I've gotten a lot of very positive responses from the community about what we've been doing, and um, and uh, we're getting all the credit, which is great. But, uh, but <laughs> that's thank the, you. That's the goal. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I just want to echo what Council Member Schultz is saying. I think that. We have established a lot of goals as a, as a city and a council. And I think there's a lot of matching we can do with our goals to further those goals. For example, in, engaging youth on a lot of the things that we've identified is going to address a youth success issue. Um, another thing that I think about that I've raised before, and I'll ask Ms. Daines and her staff to think creatively about this as we think about, and I agree with Councilmember Kovar and others who say, 
we need to spend more of that housing fund because I think it can be popular and I think it can address a lot of our issues. The man next to me worked hard in pushing forward this abandoned you know, home <coughs> registry um, or abandoned property registry. If we can create low interest loan options for families, not developers who want to come in and take those abandoned homes and buy them and live there and rehab them, rather than them just being a black eye in our community and our neighborhoods, I think that's an excellent way of sort of pairing up two goals that we have as a city. I know that the abandoned registry thing happened before our priorities in many respects, but I think it can run in tandem. Um, another thing that I would, I see Captain Collington sitting in the back, I know certain jurisdictions do this. I don't know how Montgomery County works or the state's attorney's office here works, but people look at, I'm talking about a livable community for all, safe community for all, people look at properties as being nuisance properties that pose a real danger to young people and the community. They become houses where people are squatting, doing all kinds of stuff. If we can partner in the context of this discussion that we have with our partners at the county level and the state's attorney's level and law enforcement to find effective ways to address some of these properties that may go on our registry, but then we're sort of sitting with our hands tied because we don't know what else we can do, partnering with law enforcement to declare them nuisance properties and move them forward or move the ball forward and then get that small family who wants to make their home in Tacoma Park and provide them some low interest loan which will give them the enough cushion or help to invest in our community and this house across the street that's just a sore in the community can now be sort of um, rehabbed. So I just I think I echo the comments of pairing our efforts um, in a manner, and that's one example, abandoned registry. And if I can help in that, I'm happy to, because I think that that is something that we can definitely do. Councilmember Schultz. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I would support Councilmember Qureshi's comments on re the uh, vacant distressed property registry. I, I, we've got it established, and thank. And let's be glad for that. But. I, uh, we have to think about the next step because we've got these properties and we have to figure out a way to make the owners of these blighted abandoned properties cry uncle uh, because otherwise they'll just sit there and continue to make our just be a blight and, and if we have to even threaten to use eminent domain to take these properties and get them uh, re re remodeled and oc get occupi uh, occupied as affordable housing, then let's figure out a way to do that. But I, I, I really think it's one of the most difficult, challenging problems that we face in the city. And I'll be quiet. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, thank Thanks. you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to then fiscally sustainable <clears throat> government. Is that the next one? Sure. Um, Anybody have anything they'd like? Oh, Councilmember Smith, sorry. Uh, Mr. Damweber, you, you said that uh, the city has been working with um, Rockville and Gaithersburg trying to, uh, I guess, get the county to pay us for stormwater fees for properties that are mm -hmm. in our jurisdiction. How did you guys come to the $1,500? Dollar number one and two. This is a priority for the league, trying to force the county to pay on a regular basis, mm -hmm. um, and I think that would also include the school systems uh, in Montgomery County. But how did you guys come to fifteen hundred dollars? Because that seems like a really low number. So um, first, I'll say that we are this close to having a finalized MOU. Um, it's. We spent a lot of time um, um, working with Rockville and Gaithersburg and the county to to get to where we are. Um, the way that the the number, um, which isn't final yet, um, was uh, arrived at is the county um, basically told Rockville, Gaithersburg, and Tacoma Park that here's how much we have in our budget that we can give you um, to offset the the cost for stormwater um, and. Um, ultimately, the city of Tacoma Park does not have a lot of county property um, within our jurisdiction. 
Um, and the $1,500 reflects pretty closely uh, what we would be due from the county if they were paying for um, their properties that are located within the jurisdiction. That does not include the school, um, the, the school property or uh, Montgomery College. Um, it's it's uh, just other property that they have within the county, primarily um, the, the firehouse. And, um, and w you know, I'm, I'm happy with that amount because it actually offsets what we're um, spending annually um, to um, defray those costs. Um, Rockville and Gaithersburg are getting less than, uh, are probably going to end up getting a little bit less than what they um, actually spend to defray those costs. Um, I, I don't recall the specific numbers off the top of my head, but I think um, percentage-wise, Rockville is the most um, impacted by it. Um, I'd also note that um, where we are right now, there is assurance for a couple of years, but after that, we don't know what's going to happen, and that's why it's important that we keep um, we keep up, keep at it. Um, that number rises significantly if we do factor in the school system and uh, Montgomery College to somewhere closer to fifty thousand dollars. So. Are the schools not part of this negotiation because the county Councilman said Smith, I'm sorry. Oh. Can I ask, just because we have people from the green team here and we okay. have another voting, I, I, if tonight can we do big picture stuff okay. and then maybe, all right. is that okay with you? If there's, all right. Thank you. Um, Council Member Mayo. Um, two questions um, or two comments. Uh, RFP for the lobbyist. Um, it's unfortunately, it's on my desk. It just needs to go out. Do, so I'll within the next month? Oh, yeah. And what's the RFP process? Is it a six weeks, eight weeks for? That sounds about right. OK. okay. Um, and does the council approve that at the end? No, but I'll send it out to you. OK. And then it'll come back. It'll come to you. Great. Uh, and then on the policing payments um, line about working with police chiefs, mm -hmm. it would just be great to get a more detailed update. Um, if you could prov provide a summary on paper or okay. other update to council at some point in the future. But uh, obviously, I'm identifying both those things as priorities. I appreciate seeing them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm interested in seeing them go forward, you know, and, and whatever attention we need to put to them. Okay. Council Member Schultz. It says that public policy partners, I'm quoting, is currently working on developing brief strategic plans for the Council's top three to five legislative priorities, and it goes on to elaborate what those might look like. When do we get those? These should be very shortly. I, when, um, I know Michelle Douglas is out of town for about another week, but I know they've prepared at least one, and they're working on the other one. So they should be, I would think, within the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And under this item, I'd just like to add, um, under looking to the future, um, the budget process we have this year, um, and this might go under the ink fiscally sustainable and the engaged community. Um, but I'd like to um, start thinking about how we can have um, more engagement with the public, specifically around um, our budget process, um, mm -hmm. and thinking creatively about it as we have when we're engaging the public on other issues. So I just want to put that out there. Um, great. The next is the environmentally sustainable community goal. Anybody have anything? This one. Council Member Mail? Yeah, on the carbon neutral um, piece, I just wanted to note that I oppose efforts to, to move forward with a carbon neutral city with a capital C, perfectly supportive of carbon neutral city with a small C. The difference being, I don't think we get bang for our buck by focusing on city operations. I think we get it by focusing on the whole community. And the best example you guys give here is that the solar panels on the city building, which had a significant cost, saved 99,000 kilowatt hours of electricity whereas the $10,000 grant for two apartment buildings saves 73000 almost equivalent. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think if we focus on the whole community, city with a small c, everybody, mm -hmm. then, we, then there's a lot to do. Uh, so I just wanted to note that because I think it's unclear and, and I wanted to make okay. my policy Thanks. preference clear. Okay. Anything else on this one? All right. Then we're up to engaged, responsive, and service-oriented government. Council Member Mail. Yeah, and this is a quick thing, but uh, in terms of use of my TKPK and the mm -hmm. website stats, mm -hmm. if you could actually provide mm -hmm. that reporting data to the council, yeah, sure, we'll that do. would be fantastic. It doesn't have to be in a session, um, but just as background information. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Kovar. 
Um, two questions and two comments. Um, the questions are, there was a mention on the um, website to upgrading the alerts in the um, project directory. Can mm -hmm. you just give a sentence or two on that? So the alerts is um, specifically referring to the banners across the top of the web pages which have been made um, in my opinion, much less in your face, and when you X them out, they actually go away when you um, navigate throughout the web pages. There's also along the left-hand side of um, the website, which is really nice in the mobile view as well, um, uh, basically a, cr a chronological listing of various news alerts, blogs, public notices, okay. things like that, and those are the things that are being referenced. Okay, and the council member blogs? Yes, I don't think you've website. done one yet. Yeah. yeah, well. I'd like to get you, get right. you involved. Um, uh, uh, if, if I can just address that just for a second. Um, when we talked to, about engaged, responsive, and service-oriented government, um, when we started doing the, the blogs that go out from the council members, um, and sometimes by me, um, it's re they're remarkably well-received. And it's a great way for us to share the information about the things that we do. And so I do want to encourage council members to participate in that and, and, um, and use that because it seems to be better received than almost any, any other of our communication methods. Um, just two other general comments. <coughs> um, we, I mentioned this before, and this sort of relates to a couple of the comments earlier about all these programs happening that we don't necessarily know about that are good, that are in this, and I think maybe Councilmember Schultz mentioned that, but we need to have better ongoing notification of projects, like street projects and things like that that are happening within, within the ward. And I imagine it probably seems like that's extra work for the staff, but it really isn't because what happens is we just get all these calls and then we call up the staff and we ask them to tell us what's going on and it's kind of more of a rush then. So I think actually it could save work. And then the other thing I just wanted to mention was um, with the police responsiveness, and I mentioned this earlier, but the, one of the biggest takeaways from the recent meeting we had in North Tacoma was that the follow-up afterward to people who've had some sort of who've been a victim uh, of a crime and needs to be stronger. And I think that's sort of the other side of community policing is better relations with people who haven't done anything wrong, but also helping people who've been victimized also feeling like the, the police are there for them. And we need to do both of those things. So, thanks. Great. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, Councilman. Yeah, uh, with regard to uh, Council Member Kovar's comment about getting notification, um, I'd like to point out an example of like, uh, a week and a half ago, the Department of Public Works closed the 78 block of Wildwood Drive to uh, do some milling and uh, because the, underlay, the un underside of the pavement was weakening or something like this. Uh, and the first I heard, saw, I just stumbled upon the fact that you couldn't drive down Wildwood Drive in that section. Mm -hmm. um, and I mentioned this in an email as to why I hadn't been informed. And the, the reply that I got back, and I won't mention names, basically said that this is such a routine kind of a process that it's the customarily we don't feel like it's necessary to you know, make, make, give, give people notice of this thing. Now, maybe they not, identif or notified the 20 some houses on the, in that particular block. I don't know. I don't know that either. But when they say, well, custom, it's our, been our custom not to notify, that speaks directly to the, the frustration mm -hmm. is that we need to change that custom. So that, as the city council member, I don't need anything official. I just need to be cc'd on something, right. and 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 then that way I'm a I'm ahead of the <coughs> curve, and I can let people know that this coming Wednesday, the street's <coughs> going to be closed for three week three days, and and it's it's just a, such a little thing, but it it's aggravating. Thank you. Yes, I'm aware of that. <laughs>
I know you are. I'm going to. I mean, I, I am trying to to have that um, that changed. I think one of the things that's that I both like and dislike about Tacoma Park is that um, as staff, often you know, we can just at a moment's notice switch gears and go over and you know fix some signs or do something. And, and that's good. But it, right. But it also means that there's not that kind of notification process that is really helpful. And I think there's ways to do it. Um, but getting that ingrained in ourselves is, is, um, is a challenge for us that we have to do better at. Great. And I'll just say that, um, again, the city manager and I had a lot of time together <laughs> on our way to <laughs> Prince George's um, to our meeting. And we um, talked about a number of ways of thinking about how um, we you know, we I think we've been improving over the past year of getting communication out to the public, but again, figuring out new ways to do it, reminding people of my TKPK. Um, the other thing we talked about is as we've shifted how we do alerts and information from the police department, how the city clerk puts out the agenda, just reminding people of how to sign up um, and needing to do that, um, almost like just work it into our system that every couple of months we're either doing it through the newsletter, through social media or something, reminding people. Um, so I had the experience of talking to people who I feel are fairly active in our community who didn't even know about my TKPK <laughs> um, or just or really missed getting emails from um, our city clerk. So because it's been around so long. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we had, uh, we discussed that and uh, ways to do that as well. Um, Mayor, can I ask a question mm -hmm. about that? Somebody commended me for providing them notice on my TKPK, and I didn't even do it because <laughs> it was below my signature and my email. You all mm -hmm. add something automatically yeah. as a banner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do we find out what the most updated version of that is? Oh, that's a good question. We'll have to find out. Send yourself an email. I, I mean, I, 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 our IT <laughs> folks put them on yeah, yeah. periodically, but, you know, how we notify people when those things are up. Um, right now, I think it's something about the art sale. Or, mm. or it will be something about the mm -hmm. art sale. But people really do appreciate that, too, mm -hmm. and they give me credit again for that's it. That's so. good. good. <laughs> <laughs> but I think but that's a helpful reminder about how we can get out that information mm -hmm. in right. a better, more systematic way. Yeah. <clears throat> and we did talk also, Councilmember Schultz, as you talked about before, thinking about ways about getting out the information from tonight's meeting yeah. to mm -hmm. people in a usable way. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, good. All right, our last goal before we turn it over to the green team is advance economic development efforts. I just think this is an area that I learned the most. <laughs> no. Any questions or any follow up? Councilmember Schultz. Yeah, this is another area where even though as, as interested as I am in economic development, I'm still astonished like all the things that we're doing. But I do have a question, or, uh, or three question marks about things that I want to learn a, a little bit more about right now. A qu request for proposals for marketing services mm -hmm. is under development okay. with an anticipated release date in early December. Um, and that's news to me, at least. That's we one. We talked a little bit about that during the budget process, but we'll get some information out to you about that. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to know. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, our we have a subscription to CoStar. Yes. Didn't know we had that. That's great. When did that happen? Was that fairly recent or not? Is it, is it relatively recent? I believe we've had that for six or seven months. Okay. We've got it within this last year. Okay, because it's a very valuable resource. Yeah, we use it quite frequently. Okay, well, I'm glad to know. Is there any way uh, we can tap into it? I mean, I realize it's a subscription service. I'll talk to you on this thing right now, but um, if there's a specific question or issue or okay. an area that the council is interested in, um, let me know and we can go through and do the background research for you. Okay. Um, thank you. The other thing is it says construction of three new commercial structures on the New Hampshire Avenue corridor. I'm only aware of the Taco Bell. Are there two others? Um, there is the two-story laundromat that's in the process uh, further down on New Hampshire Avenue. Yeah, yeah. And the 
third one eludes me at the moment. Okay. But there are three that are in process. Um, yes. It's not storage units, is it? No. <laughs> I'm just asking. Right. <laughs> Giving a hard time. I didn't hear that. It's not storage, storage units. units. No. <laughs> <laughs> you Council Member Kovar. Uh, I'll be brief. Um, in the material that talks about the new business retention and expansion program, um, I just want to make sure that thinking about tax impact uh, as well as in garbage, which I mentioned before, and there maybe ought to be something in there about. Um, the border between commercial and residential areas because that seems to be kind of a flashpoint, at least in the part I represent, and what can be done sort of on a systematic basis to try to make that work well because in the end it's going to help businesses be able to, to form. Thanks. Great. All right. Well, I just want to add my thanks to um, the deputy city manager and all the city staff for um, helping um, put this together. Um, I'm glad we took the time um, to do this because, um, as many um, my, my colleagues said, there's a lot of work being done um, by staff in the city, and it's nice to see. And we realize this is not even everything that's being done. Um, and it's good to know that the work that we put in to establish the priorities um, last January is, is helping. Um, to get the work done. Right, and I think one of the things that, you know, I've yeah. been here a while, um, because the council is so interested in this and set fairly specific priorities, it, it actually, you know, enlivens the staff. It makes them excited. And that, that has helped move these things along. I appreciate it very much. Okay. Terrific. All right, now I want to thank, um, I think the green team is here, uh, and we'll Two of, well, two of you. <laughs> the co-chairs, right? Uh -huh. And I, I hear lots of rain outside, so I thank you for coming out on this evening. Um, sorry, I'm just looking for my updated sheet. Um, I think our goal tonight in reviewing um, the Tacoma Park Green Team priorities after our discussion in October um, is to um, review those and then also review um, the possible council information requests. We've been asked by the green team to identify one to three of these on the list. There is now seven uh, for the green team to continue uh, working on. Uh, what we're going to be doing in early January is um, have a resolution adopting um, the priorities that we'll discuss. So why don't we first take that document. Um, it's the first document that says Tacoma Park Green Team Priorities. October 2016, and I don't know if our, co if you want to come to the microphones. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> pointing out um, what we've changed since what you, since what, what we talked about. So in the in the meeting that we all had in October, we talked about making some changes which are reflected in what you have in front of you. Um, so we moved the tree canopy goal up to the first tier. We added a water quality goal in the third tier. Then when the committee looked at it, we realized that there was a lot of redundancy between stormwater and water quality and that they would do better together. So the, they, they've been combined, um, but the water quality piece is the, is the emphasis on that. Um, and we clarified and focused the transportation goal to separate out what's already being done, as you just heard, it's a ton, um, to further, to, to focus on further defining what more we can do in that area. So those were the, the main changes from what you saw and what we talked about in October. Um, and then the second part of this is, is there were a number of suggestions about, well, if you had a little more information on this or that or a little more detail on something else, um, and we can do that, but we can't do seven of them, not all at the same time. So we were hoping the second thing tonight to have some focus on what you would like to see us um, get back to you on sooner rather than later. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. And thank you very much for compiling the notes and bringing this back to us after our meeting. It's very helpful. Um, I'll open it up to my colleagues. Um, looking at the uh, priorities document first, is there any 
comments or anything or questions? Okay. Seeing none then, um, we'll have um, the city clerk put this into uh, resolution format and when we come back from our recess in January, we'll adopt that. All right, is that? Okay. Did you want to, are you, are you gonna address these? Yeah, now we're gonna go to oh. the next thing. Um, so now looking at the next page, these are um, uh, areas um, that we discussed. There are seven of them. Um, the first is a carbon neutral goal, renewable energy is the second, Trees is number three, four is affordable housing, six is economic development, seven is water quality. We've been requested um, to select one to three of these um, so that the um, green team, the council on the, uh, the committee on the environment can provide more information to us. Is there no five? Oh, I did see that. I just <laughs> yeah, there might have been a five at one point. That okay, just and I just read. I, I just kept reading. We, you're cutting it down just like that. we did. Yeah, I think yeah. we just cut it down. Yeah. yeah, perfect. I just want to say on the trees, this is this is informational. It's not the effort to work on a tree canopy goal and right. indicators. This is a, a more programmatic piece that you all talked about. Just to clarify, mm -hmm. the tree canopy. Goal development is a, a separate exercise that's moving forward. Great. So maybe for the next um, few minutes, we'll, people can discuss um, different areas that they're interested in, and then the way we'll do this is just go down each, and we'll do a hand count for each one, and then see the top one to three uh, vote getters. Does that work for everybody? Okay. Councilmember Mail, you kick us off. I'm sorry, do I have to talk about the first one or I can talk about it? No, you can talk about all of them and then um, then after we're done talking, then we're going to go down each and you can vote on the one you want. Thank you. Um, the ones you want. The three I want to flag, uh, renewable energy, I just think with the close of the Georgetown Energy Prize at some point this year, January, soon, um, it's a good time to think about sort of the, the next steps we can take on renewable energy. Um, uh, so that's one space. The second is affordable housing, uh, and I think that just given the council's interest in housing uh, in general, uh, I'm strongly supportive of, of being able to learn more from the committee uh, and the green team on, on opportunities in the affordable housing space. I would actually personally suggest that that's a, that's a similar way to fit in the especially along New Hampshire Avenue corridor piece, because uh, where I hope we eventually go with New Hampshire Avenue corridor is both commercial mm -hmm. development and uh, particularly housing development. <coughs> and so the, the information we learn in the affordable housing uh, request for information um, could benefit New Hampshire Avenue redevelopment. And then water quality, I think that's something that just where there's just a gap in terms of uh, our knowledge of opportunities and options, um, connection to county programs, state programs. Um, uh, this is an area where I think there's going to be also strong federal attention in the next few years, maybe. Uh, and um, so it's worth learning more about opportunities in the water quality space. Thanks. Okay. Would anyone else like to speak to any of these? All right. Okay, we're everybody, okay, Council Member I would Culver. just say, and I think this is maybe the same thing that um, Council Member Mayo was just saying, but four and six seem like this, it's almost like the same thing to me because um, I view that as the two of them is connected. Maybe four and six could become the missing five. Uh, but but those <laughs> those sort this of is what we like to do here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Categories and, and, and create. Yeah, I thought that's sort of what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I agree with the, the idea that those kind of go together. Whatever number we give them. I would like the yes. You can speak to that. Oh no, I was it. just I was just going to say that I I didn't hear the whole introduction to this on the on the priorities discussion but would these be useful pieces of information for the retreat the priority setting for this coming year and so that would be a reason to focus on them sooner rather than later well they obviously sure. they, I mean they certainly yeah. would be useful in the in the coming year yeah, yeah. Um, okay you know I don't know that they're needed by January but I no. think that they're yeah. I think that okay. they certainly will be referred to and I think also it can be on an ongoing basis. Like we, it's not like you have to go away for like eight months and then come back or a year and come back to us. Yeah. But you know, I think as we're we we're going through the budget and thinking about that and setting priorities, um, depending on which of these areas we select, as you're getting information, as the 
committee is coming to some conclusions, feeding that back to staff and the council will be helpful. So, um, council member, do you want to follow yeah, up just on to, Just a sort of clarification of what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that information on the first couple of pages identified some clear priorities, actions. Right. This is really more about providing information to council. Yes. And so just from a process perspective, I don't know what you're planning, but you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that the documents you provide have to be consensus documents, right. that the committee is wordsmithing, just sort of a small, a small set of people decide to work on one issue and you give us information mm -hmm. that you come up with. Is that, am I yeah. thinking about that the right way? That's what I was thinking, yeah, you guys. that's okay. kind of what we were thinking. Okay. Perfect. Councilmember Siemens. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and thank you for staying with us so late tonight mm -hmm. and all your work in this. Uh, yes, I would uh, think that the carbon neutral goal is uh, uh, something that we need more information about. Um, I don't know, should I argue to make one and two together? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that the affordable housing, I agree with that one as being a priority. And I think uh, water quality is a um, priority issue across the country, and I think it's um, good for us to get more information about that at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Schultz. Yeah, on, the, on, this, on the subject of water quality, it's interesting. I had Clean Water Action come to my door uh, this evening trying to get some more money out of me, and they did. Uh, <laughs> But I'd like to put in a, a vote for, for trees uh, here because the way I see it is that the whole discussion on trees that we had at the Green Team and then subsequently with the Tree Commission, uh, gosh, just about a week ago, um, the, it's, it's a many-pronged issue. And the, uh, based on uh, queries that I get from residents wanting to know what's going on with trees and what they can do to get involved and under better understand things it just seems to me that the sooner we can get good information back it'll help us facilitate the process of trying to uh, make, do do all the, figure out how we're going to help with the improving the educational process the process for figuring out um, the new role, new roles for the new arborist or forest manager, whatever it is we're going to call him or her, um, as well as the challenges of of making changes to the city's tree ordinance, which is another whole big challenge. Um, and so that's why I think that whatever information that we can you can provide to us in that that realm. Um, that's the only thing that stands out for me. The, the, rather, okay. the others, I'm ready, willing to go along with my colleagues on, on, on those, on the top three. Can I ask you, um, you all a question? Are there ones that the committee is particularly interested in looking into? Because I think all of them are. <laughs> <laughs> While you're thinking, my, my vote would be for whatever you need for your January priority setting. Is there something like on affordable housing and economic development and the relationship to environment? Is that something you need for your priority setting meeting in January or do you need something else? That, that would be where I would focus the sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. um, and then absent that, I would, I, would all, I would be really interested in seeing the carbon neutral and the information on what that looks like. Well, what do you think? Uh, just going based on the first document. <laughs> so just going based on the first document, I think the committee would agree that renewable energy and trees are on the top. Say that again, please. So just referencing the first document that we yeah. produced and proposed to you, I would say the committee was probably most interested in tackling those first. Yeah. But I mean, we're just providing information that you want for discussion. I think. The question I'm still a little unclear on is, yeah. given that the thing like trees are a first tier priority in the previous document, yes. I, I was thinking that you would already be providing us with information as right. well as our city staff providing information on trees. And so I was thinking there wouldn't be what would be necessary from this additional project. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like it. I, I don't quite understand what would be different. That's that, pretty slick. He combines I, some things. I, know, I, know. I, I think your votes should be about what information you want, new or 
it, it shouldn't be regarded based on the t t tiers. It should be where you're missing information. Okay. So, but so something the, the like question Kate asked was where she thought the committee's interest was. All right. So renewable energy or energy efficiency or urban tree canopy, those are first tier issues. But right. some of them we might know more about than others, and so if there's a mm -hmm. gap, okay. You there might you feel go. you know all you need to know about trees, and you're ready to support it. Or got it. And I think it's true. Water quality, there's not a lot there. It's a kind of a, it's a new one. <laughs> and how do you all feel about if, as I forget which of my colleagues suggested, um, combining affordable housing and economic development? I think that looks fine. I mean, the the statements. Uh, following both those categories are similar. Yeah, it's a how to how to build green and environmental issues into building projects. Great. All right. And at, least, at least from a you know strictly building standpoint, green buildings and utility costs they're kind of the same same answer, but the social part's a little different. Great. All right. So are we? Do anyone have any other questions? Are we ready to vote? All right. How many folks of, um, and don't vote more p than three times, okay? You get three <laughs> times to raise your hand. Um, carbon, uh, c the first one, carbon neutral goal. Yeah, this is just information. Okay. Renewable energy. One, two, three. Oh, no. One, two, three, four. I was up on carbon. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. Um, trees. One, two, three, four. Uh, affordable housing and economic development. Oh, it went there. <laughs> and then water quality. Water quality. One, two, three, four. All right. All right. Well, no, not really. The only one we got rid of was carbon neutral. Yeah, it's ranked choice voting. <laughs> All right. So affordable housing and economic development is definitely in. Everyone voted for that. The next are um, renewable energy, trees, and water quality. No. No. I have four for each of those. Yeah. All right. What about renewable energy? Renewable is four. You guys really want us to research all these. And we do. It's hard. We don't like to. Okay. Well, we can kick the trees to somebody else. <laughs> right. So we want to do another, another round of Yeah, let's do another three. round of, um, and you only get now two vo two votes. Um, right? Can, All right. You, can you, Mara, read out the ones you're going to read before we start voting? Yes. <laughs> Renewable energy, trees, and water quality. Okay. That's what I okay. carbon neutral. Is out. done. Is out. Yeah, yeah, is out. Okay. And affordable, affordable housing, housing economic development already had all of us. All right, okay. renewable energy. <laughs> Four. <laughs> Trees. Five. 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 Okay. Water quality. Four. Three. Three. Four. Oh. Four. All right. All right, so trees are in. And so now. <laughs> Well, right. I mean, you could just could do just the do. trees and the afford the joined affordable housing and economic development. You don't have to do. They did okay. ask for one to three requests. Yeah. Wait, yeah, and I have a I have a problem with our process here. Okay. <laughs> we only needed to add one more, and yet some council members voted twice. No, we need to. We could add, add two more. It's one to three. Oh, we're only supposed to vote twice. I thought okay. that. Did you vote three times? Did yeah. you vote three times? Okay. Oh, that's a problem. I thought that. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember what I did. Okay, so we're going to do this again. Can you roll the tape back? I thought we had two already in. No, we only have one in. Uh, affordable housing is. And, and I can always well remember that they said we could combine it. Okay, that's one. Okay. That's and that was it. That's okay. the only one who got seven. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> you, get, you can raise your hands twice. All right, we have renewable trees, water quality. Okay? <laughs> Renewables. One, two, three, four, five. Trees. One, two, three, four. Water quality. One, two, three, four. Okay, so renewables are now in. But does that add up to the right number? There should be seven. There should be fourteen votes, and that's not fourteen. That's thirteen. There are 13. You know what? So I someone, so someone you, voted. You are allowed to bullet vote. You are allowed to bullet vote. 
You don't have to vote twice. No, you're right. You're right. That's just funny. It makes your single vote stronger. Well, we actually have three if you count the first two, so it's or, or two, so that's fine. Right. So you'll do two, four, six, renewable energy and affordable housing and economic development. Yeah, five and five is ten and four is fourteen divided by seven is two votes. Yeah. All right, so renewable energy, and affordable quality. housing, and water quality? No, economic development. I mean, it's a combined They're thing. the same thing. Right, they said we could combine them. Yeah. Right. So I don't want to count those as separate things, having voted that way. So All right. Let me let me make a can I make a case mm -hmm. for something. Yeah. For the water quality piece, we just I, I don't feel like as council I know anything about it. I don't know. I don't really understand the city's the progress that the city has in the bioretention goal mm -hmm. we've signed up for as a, under state and really a federal mandate to to do bioretention. I don't understand that piece. I don't understand the current status of sewage sewer treatment projects in Sligo Creek. I just feel like that's a total black box to me. Uh, and not a black box that our staff are necessarily well prepared to, to fill in all the gaps on. Um, whereas, you know, for example, with trees, we had an arborist. Um, we have a tree committee in the city that just focuses on trees. So those are very different different things in terms of the magnitude of information at our fingertips right now. So that's an example to me of why why this is a priority to get this wonderful body of people to throw information at us that we don't so we don't have. I'll change my vote. I'll change my vote too. That's I'll change it. mine too. How much will you pay? Were you changing to water quality? We'll go to water quality. You have this can. Okay. Water quality from, so from then, trees. So then renewable trees. energy, affordable, affordable housing, economic development, and, and water, water quality. quality. Okay. You know the health of trees. That was already water quality. Good job. Thanks. Okay. Does okay. that work for you all? You owe me we one. gave you four instead of one to three, right? You, can, you guys can come back to us and say you don't want to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate your. I appreciate. I appreciate your taking this. I mean, taking the time and doing the process as crazy as it is, but to give us some some mm -hmm. sense of where to go. I think that's great. And we can work with staff to see what is easy and what's not, and you know. See yeah, and if you need to come back to us, I mean, I think there was a clear consensus on the affordable housing economic yeah, development, yeah, yeah. and that, that was clear. And then the mix between renewable energy, water quality, trees. Yeah. If, as you're working on this, if you want to come back to us, you know where to find us every Wednesday night, except the rest of December. <laughs> so. I think it, I think it's neat that there was so much interest okay. in everything. Yeah. yeah. I think We're excited. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. All right. We are adjourned. Love it. Love it. Tuesday. Love it. Don't forget. your official peace delegate, coming to you tonight with a few words of peace. I suppose you know that uh, Thanksgiving is past, and it should be Thanksgiving every day. We should be grateful for what we've got and the fact that we still got the strength to do something to make our world a better place. Yep, and Christmas is coming up, which is supposed to be the, the celebration of the greatest uh, Greatest peace activist in the world, that the world had ever known. Jesus Christ, he's the greatest peace activist I have ever known. We should be celebrating his birthday. We do celebrate. It's called Christmas. And we have, uh, and we have gift giving and parties and everything else. But we should also remember the ones who don't have families, who are too old 